Welcome to Wildly Wealthy Life, the show that's all about exploring the different paths to a life of freedom and fulfillment and how that ripples through your personal life, family life, and to the community. Join husband and wife power couple Lee and Kat Hughes as they share people's stories from different backgrounds and lifestyles about what it means to live a life well lived. Tune in and take that first step to becoming the best version of yourself, personally and professionally, here on Wildly Wealthy Life. Start practicing gratitude, number one. Even if you're poor and you want to be wealthy, that's how every wealthy person starts out poor, wanting to be wealthy. They get there over time. Number two is be patient. I've been doing my podcast now for three years. I got 135 episodes on it, and I haven't made any money on it. But I'm not giving up. You got to be patient, guys. Like, you can't try something for three weeks or three months and give up because it's not working. You got to be relentless. All Mm -hmm. right. So, be patient and be relentless. Be grateful. And I'd say number three is you know enough. Quit trying to over-educate. I'm not saying don't educate. If you enjoy listening to podcasts, listen to 10 podcasts. But if you want to start a business or start investing, start. Well, welcome back, actually, to another episode of Wildly Wealthy Life Podcast. Uh, This is Lee, and my lovely co-host over here to my side is my wife, Kat. Kat, who do we have on today? Today, we have David Dodge. Really excited to chat with him today. He's been a real estate investor. He's got over 14 years of experience, has done over 400 flips, uh, over 60 rentals. He is an author, an educator, and what I love about David Dodge is he's very transparent with his numbers. He uh, has a channel there and in YouTube. I've seen some of his videos where he walks through you with the numbers, and so you can really get to see how real estate investing works. And so excited to chat with him today. David, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> no problem. We're excited to have you on today. Yes. Thanks for having me. Uh, David, can you tell us what you do? I mean, yes, I did kind of just describe like, you know, what you've done, but how did you get to where you are with real estate investing and, you know, over 400 flips? That's a lot. That's a ton. So how did you start? Sure. That's a great question. So the thing about... Um, about the number of flips is that would be impossible to do by yourself. So I'm a huge proponent of putting teams together and building teams and putting the right person in the right seat. So um, as you had mentioned, I've been investing in real estate for 15, maybe going on 16 years now. Hmm. And um, the first 10 years, I was basically buying one house a year. And when I was doing it, I wasn't a full-time real estate investor. Basically, what I was doing is I've had a lot of uh, friends that have been real estate investors. And I had a couple of college professors specifically that um, in my finance classes were talking about real estate investing And uh, one class was actually a class on Rich Dad, Poor Dad, if you can believe it. I don't even know how the University of Missouri allowed that to happen. The (laughs) class wasn't titled that. It was titled something different. But when we got in there the first day, the the, um, instructor took the the syllabus for the class and just was kind of like in the trash. And he's like, we're going to learn about this book. I was like, oh, cool. This is great. (laughs) And... um, so anyway, with that being said, you know, I, I've, I've been invested in, in, in always interested in real estate, you know, for a really long time. And out of college, I had, you know, just a bunch of random jobs, like most people, jobs in sales, jobs in marketing, jobs in service. And what I would do, though, is I would save up 20 or 30 grand. And I would go get a loan for, you know, 80 to 100 grand, and I'd buy a property and I'd rent it out. So the, for the first 10 years, excuse me, I wasn't, um, I wasn't full time at this and really it was just a place to park my money. Um, I've never really been a huge stock market guy cause I don't have control. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've owned stocks and have stocks now, but you know, it's not my favorite thing. I don't have control. So I was basically just parking money. I, I've always been, you know, relatively good at saving. 
And then about five years ago, I learned a little, I learned this little thing called wholesaling real estate. And basically the lesson that I learned from multiple coaches that I hired, and I love having coaches. I am a coach. Uh, I suggest that everybody get a coach at some point if they, if they really want to be get good at something because you can learn things on your own. A coach is there just to speed it up. Right. So love having coaches, but I hired a couple coaches and they basically taught me a couple simple things. You don't need to buy property at retail. You just don't. There's opportunities out there where you can get it at a discount. And since I learned that five years ago, I have yet to buy a property at retail. I'm always searching for motivated sellers and I'm trying to buy properties at a significant discount. Basically, if I can't get at least a 25% discount on something I'm buying, uh, I'm not buying it. Okay. And I took that knowledge and I ran with it. And I met some other people that were uh, in the marketing business what the, of what we call wholesaling. Wholesaling is really a marketing business. It's not a real estate business. Mm -hmm. Real estate is the thing that you're buying and selling. It is your inventory, right? It is your widget, right? But you are not a real estate investor, in my opinion, if you all you do is wholesale. You become an investor when you start flipping properties and doing rehabs or buying them to hold long term. And, um, you know, it took me about three months to do my first deal. It took my partner about five, maybe six to do his. And um, once we learned that we were not in the real estate business, that we were in the marketing business, mm -hmm. um, everything kind of started falling in place. So since then, over the last couple of years, I put together a team. I have two partners. So there's three of us total. And again, that's, that's why we do so many deals. We, we kind of have to. Whenever you have a lot of mouths to feed at the same time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's three partners here in my company. We have uh, two acquisition people, actually three. We just picked one up. We have a disposition person. We have an office manager and two full-time virtual assistants in the, in the Philippines. So we have a, we built a good team, but I love having a good team. I would never want to go back to doing it on my own after having a team. Um, and I wrote a book. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Wholesaling Real Estate. If you're watching, if you're <laughs> watching, I'm holding it up. If you're listening, you can, <laughs> yeah, if you're listening, you can buy it on Amazon. It's not a big profit center for me, guys. I make like three bucks, right? I sell it for about $15 mm -hmm. after the printing costs and everything. But really, the, uh, the book is jam-packed with everything that I do in my business. So there's nothing that I don't, that I do that's really, you know, held back out of the book. There might be some new strategies that I've added to my business since I wrote the book, but um, basically my whole business is in here. And the message is simple. It's, uh, you know, you can flip properties without having a lot of money or any money. I mean, I, I don't like to say any money because everything in life has a cost, you know, even driving for dollars, you have to buy gas, right? So you're, you're going to have to spend some money, but the message is little to none. And you can, you can get properties under contract with, with, uh, with contracts. You can, you can secure them and, and control the deal. And then you can find buyers for those contracts and you can sell those contracts and really you're flipping paper. Mm -hmm. If you're a true wholesaler, you're, you, you shouldn't have to close on your properties excuse me, even though that we do in some scenarios because there's big spreads or we just have to, but you know, 85 to 90% of the deals that we flip, it's paperwork being flipped. It's not properties. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of coaches out there, you know, they don't, they don't explain that to people. You know, it's, you're, you're flipping paperwork. And, um, but anyway, in the last five years, call it, my partners and I have flipped actually closer to 500 houses. I need to update all my stuff, but <laughs> I think I'm at about four, 480, four, 490, somewhere in that range. Um, and to date I have 63 rental properties. That number is, um, a little, it's a little, it's a little strange. We have about 74 doors but we, we've always counted our single families. So as I've added, you know, twos, fours, and I have a 10 family too, I don't count the doors. I just count the number of single family roofs basically. And we do that by, by the cash flow that it creates. Right. So our 10 family really counts for three houses because it's equivalent mm -hmm. to owning three. So we have, we have 63 um, single families if you do it the math that way.
Right. And um, so the first 10, so this is, this is probably the most important thing, guys, if, if you're listening and, and um, you're interested in real estate. The first 10 that I bought, like I said in the beginning, I put down 20 or $30,000, but I, had a, I went to a bank and I got a loan and I got a 70 to 80% loan on these properties and I was able to acquire properties you know, around the $100,000 mark. Um, but I had to come out of pocket 20 or 30 grand, right? And most people don't have 20 or 30 grand laying around. And that's not a bad approach, right? It's better to, to put down 20 or 30 grand than to not have 20 or 30 grand to do it at all, right? I totally agree with that, with that, you know, mindset. However, the first 10 that I did, I had to put that money down. So you're talking $200,000 that I saved up over 10 years to put into property. However, after I learned a little thing about wholesaling and motivated sellers and that this is the marketing business, mm -hmm. um, we've picked up an additional, what would that be, 53 properties right. with, with little to no money out of, out of our pockets. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I tell all my students, you don't have to do what I did. Don't spend 10 years and 200 grand uh, investing. If you want to do it that way, that's great because, again, to me, it's just a savings account, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That pays a big dividend, and even more importantly than than the dividend, which is cash flow, um, is the depreciation. So, like, I I don't even pay taxes. I do. I'm not going to sit here and say I don't pay any taxes. Yeah. But compared to my friends, you know, my tax rate's like twelve percent when you do whenever you average it across everything. Yeah. Whereas most people are paying thirty five, sometimes forty five. If you're making tons of cash, paying like twelve <laughs> no, legally, legally. Yeah. Right. So right. that's, that's my, that's more, you know, that's like one of the main things that I really love about mm -hmm. owning rental properties and investing in real estate. And I look at every property as I don't have my little piggy bank with me, but I got this really ugly pink polka dotted piggy bank and I, I love it. But I look at every one of my properties as a piggy bank that somebody else is depositing multiple hundreds of dollars into every month. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, real estate is, it is a get wealthy for sure game if you're in it long enough, right. but it is the farthest thing from get rich quick that there is. Oh, it's yeah. a wealth game, not a rich game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A couple of, I mean, you've been nailing on like a hundred different points just in that little moment there of like sharing other knowledge, but with the, um, the different properties that you've been getting into, or I guess like through your experiences, you've been dealing with different types of properties. Uh, what was the shift for you, like heading more into like the educational route? Because you, you know, obviously you have the podcast, you have uh, the classes you shared um, through your book. What was the shift for you? Like, why did you want to start, you know, giving back in that sense? That's a great question. That's a great question. So um, I don't make a lot of money, uh, barely any at all on coaching. Mm -hmm. the, the goal would be to build out a big coaching business. But the way I see it is I'm a very, I'm not a, I'm not a religious person, but I, I, I do stick to my morals and, and I have morals yeah. and I don't like people that get into the coaching business just to make a profit. So my play was a little backwards. It was let's provide as much value as I possibly can mm -hmm. and teach as many people as I possibly can all the knowledge that I have and hopefully they don't call me and say they want to hire me because they've already learned enough. However, there's a lot of people that still want you to hold their hand. And by giving out as much value as I try to give out, I eliminate, you know, basically getting coaching students that aren't going to do anything. They're not going to listen to what I say. And then in return, they're going to go online and they're going to say bad things, which is just going to not help the future business, right? So to me, coaching is a business. Real estate is a business. It's, it's, these are separate businesses. Um, but I know that, you know, whenever you have 10 people and you tell them all to do something that's going to require effort or money, one of them, are, one of them is going to do it. So I provide as much value as I possibly can to weed out the 90% of people that aren't serious. So I do have a coaching business, right? Mm -hmm. And I am more than happy to help people. Uh, that want the additional help. They want my time or they want my phone number essentially so they can call me up. Um, but I like to just weed out the herd. And, and, the, and, and, and because of doing that, I've provided more value 
than any other person I know in the real estate niche um, in terms of a free course, a book, um, and a podcast. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have one or even two of those. I got all three. So yeah. <laughs> um, I, I have a free course on wholesaling real estate. If you guys want to check it out, it's free wholesale course. Dot com. It doesn't get any easier than that. It's the exact <laughs> definition of what it is. Add the dot com on it. And then, of course, I have a book, The Ultimate Guide to Wholesaling Real Estate. And then our podcast um, is called Discount Property Investor. If you're watching, you can see my logo here behind me. If you're not, uh, Discount Property Investor is the podcast. And lately, we've been putting out uh, two, three episodes a week, and we're going to try our best to keep that momentum going in the past we've we've done you know 10 20 episodes and then took a couple months off and um but i really enjoy doing it i really enjoy talking to people and i really enjoy teaching what i know mm -hmm. so that's kind of where i'm at in terms of the um the offerings that i have and the re the rationale behind it i've also spent um uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars you know i'd say if i were to guess probably 150 maybe maybe 180 thousand dollars on coaches courses books retreats seminars masterminds I mean you name it and I'm continuing to do so so I'm learning a lot of things that I like to share with people and and, and the sad part about it is is that 90% of the stuff that I'm sharing with people doesn't get utilized they're not taking action on it only about 10% are so a lot of people are getting free coaching but I think it's great because the information's out there anyway all this information is out there. That's out there on YouTube. It's out there on other podcasts. It's out there in other books. My goal is just to try to take all this information and simplify it, you know, and really kind of break it down more step by step or even spoon feed it to people. Um, because again, that's, that's what most people need. A lot of people, when they finish a book, they look for the next book to read yeah. instead of saying, well, shit, there was 10 things in that book that I could start doing right now to better myself, my business, my life, my mindset, whatever. But they look for the next book, you know? So it's, 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 kind, of, it's kind of crazy in a way. So hopefully I answered your question. I know I, uh, I talk for days. Yeah, it's so. all good. So <laughs> basically, <laughs> like, you know, like just to kind of tap on that a little bit, uh, you know, a lot of people just love, there's almost this hunger just for knowledge, but not really application. And once you apply it, that's actually when, it becomes real. And so I just, I just really want to kind of encourage our listeners to hone in on that. Like what you're saying, you know, you pick up a book, don't just pick up another book after that. Actually try to live out what you just read, which is really Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. So thing. whenever, whenever I'm onboarding a new, a new student for, you know, my real estate coaching, the first thing I say is, all right, what do you know about real estate investing? Tell me everything you know. And usually I cut them off after about a minute or two because they'll say, well, I know I need to be marketing. And I go, cool, done. Everything else that you know is irrelevant. How are you going to negotiate with somebody if you're not marketing to get your phone ringing to go, to go on the appointment, right? Mm -hmm. So really, it's like you don't need to know what happens next. You can learn that. What you need to focus on and do is what matters now and today. So if you want to build a wholesaling business or start buying rental properties or find that first deal that you can fix and flip, I'm a real estate guy, so I'm talking real estate, right? Your guys' audience may be thinking different things, but whatever that thing might be, start your business, you know, or whatever it might be. Don't worry about the things that happen on day 12 and day 37 and day 200, guys. How do you get to day two? Well, you got to do something on day one. So do that. Focus on that. Do that now. Day two, you can learn what you need to do then. You don't need to know it on day one. So a lot of times, you know, and this is one, this is probably one of the best lessons that I learned from mm -hmm. one of the coaches that I hired in the beginning. His name was Joe. I always plug my buddy, Joe. He lives in St. Louis here too. But I hired him to teach me how to get into the marketing business, how to find motivated sellers and how to market. Mm -hmm. and we we were we were using this little two way messaging app called Voxer, and it was just sends little voicemails back and forth. And I kept sending voicemails to Joe saying, "Hey, what happens if I call this guy and he says this? Hey, Joe, what happens if I go on the appointment and they say this? And then I was send another one. I say, "Hey, Joe, what happens if <laughs> I get this?" And Joe sent me a message back and he said, "David, you are not allowed 
And I had just paid Joe several thousand dollars, by the way. You are not allowed to send me another message until you do some marketing and get an appointment. Go on an appointment and then you can send me a message and we'll talk for an hour. But stop. Stop asking me stupid ass questions. Pardon my language. <laughs> stop <laughs> bothering me with all of this what ifs. Because 90% of the time, those things don't happen. And mm -hmm. if they do, then tackle that situation at that time. Mm -hmm. Focus on what matters today. So I literally was like, well, shoot. I just paid this guy several thousand dollars, and I can't even talk to him because <laughs> I need to do something. So I, what, what do you think I did? I went and I did that thing. So that's like, I mean, if, if, if there could be a, 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 you know, one gold nugget that, that anyone takes away from today's episode, it is stop worrying. Stop looking for the next book. Stop mm. trying to over-educate yourself. The knowledge is out there. But what happens is people get in analysis paralysis. They focus on needing to know that next thing. Or maybe if I know one more thing about this, I'll be the expert. Or I'll build up enough courage. Stop. You don't need to know how to do everything. You learn along the way or you hire somebody that does when you get to that point. But by sitting around thinking about all these things, you get into a state of analysis paralysis, and it, exa it is exactly that nothing ends up happening. <laughs> so I'm a real estate guy, right? But this, this kind of goes across you know, all spectrums here. You know, yeah. It's more of a psychology or a mindset. Yeah. Action is 10 times more powerful than education because oftentimes education leads to just doing nothing or trying to continue to educate. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big proponent of education, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on it. And I still do. But at the end of the day, like there is, this is another thing here. And I know I'm, I'm stealing the show here. I know I'm talking about, <laughs> but I think, I think I'm spitting some, some pretty good nuggets here. Uh, I went to a mastermind just recently. It's 10 grand to go to. And it's a three day event. And after the, or halfway through the first day, this, this guy gets up and walks out. And I'm like, man, I like this guy. He's been joking with me and he's been really nice. So I follow him out. And I go, hey, man, where are you going? He goes, I got what I needed. And I go, you're not going to stay for two and a half more days? He goes, no, because then I won't, get, I won't do what I need to do. He goes, I, I'm, I'm great at this. But I've been doing this 15 years. I, I came here for one or two things and I got them. I'm out. And I was like, wow. I'm impressed. You paid 10 grand to come to a three day event and you stayed for four hours. And it's not because you had to leave. You had nowhere to go, but he knew that if he tried to take 10 things in that none of them would get done. He's like, I came here for one or two things to better my business. I got them and I'm done. I'm going to go do those things. So on day three, and I'm still sitting there taking notes. This dude's 25% of the way through his plan to execute these one or two things. And I was like, after I left that event, I'm like, man, I'm looking at a sheet of 600 things that I could be doing. And I'm like, I'm going to take after this guy. <laughs> Two or three things on this list and just throw the list away. Or so file it in the cabinet. And I'm going to focus on those. So focus is power, guys. Action is more important than education. Yeah, I actually do want to touch on that because when you're sharing that story, that to me is really a mindset. You know, he wasn't... He wasn't scared of missing out on the rest of the two days. He it was recorded also, and they were going to send the recording to people. So I got to, you got to give him that, but you are correct. Right. Yes. He wasn't worried about, he said, I'm going to get this later anyway. I don't need to be here. But right. right now I have scheduled three days on my calendar to do nothing. And I know that there's two things that I could do right now that would 10 X my business. Why wait till day four? I'm going to go do these now. I'll watch this replay later. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, man, I need to do what you, that I'm coming with you, man. Let's go. Yes, do that. Yes. So even like with that, you know, like I want to touch a little bit on uh, earlier when you were saying, you know, when in the first 10 years of your business, you're like buying a house every single year and you had to put in your hard earned save money to put into your deals. And you said something about how you, you basically, you just, we're just a saver growing up. So I kind of want to, explore that how did you just become a saver like what influenced you you know in your younger years to just know because again for most of our listeners probably that's part of the hardest part for them is knowing even how to handle their finances you know or, or saving and all that so I would kind of know want, want to know what was your mindset at that time with just finances and knowing how to handle them 
That's a great point. So saving money is, is probably one of the hardest things that everybody struggles <laughs> with. And I'm not that great at saving um, 10% of my money, 15%, 20%. But what I am good at doing is generating decent chunks of cash. You know, like maybe 10, 5, 10, 15 grand. Um, so what I would do is um, every time that I would, you know, whatever my business would be. Most of my, most of my jobs have been commission-based jobs growing up. So I would work really, really hard to get a good, get a good commission, maybe five, 10 grand on whatever it is I was selling or promoting. And then I take that big chunk and I would just basically stick it in a savings account. Um, I know there are people out there that are very diligent and trying to think of the right word. And I guess it would just be more, um, they're just better at being consistent than I am. Mm -hmm. Right. So to me, like trying to save five or 10% of every dollar that came in would just be impossible. It's just, and it's just not my thing. I don't want to have to be that detailed. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but what I would do is, you know, I'd live, I've always lived off of just my normal, my normal pay right now. I'm an entrepreneur. So that's like a roller coaster, of course. <laughs> but when I had different jobs, you know, I'd always have a salary job or I'd always try to get jobs that had a, a small salary, but they would pay, you know, 50% ish of the total income for that year via via commissions mm -hmm. so i'd live off of the salary and i would save my commissions because it's way easier to get a five thousand dollar deposit and transfer that over into a savings account than try to save a hundred dollars a week just mm -hmm. consistently because then what happens is you steal from that account and, and everything else so to me the only or the best way for me to, and it's never, and it's not not typically thirty thousand dollars saved. Sometimes I could go get a house for, you know, let's say the house was, and I'm in St. Louis, by the way. Where are you guys located at? L.A. <laughs> L.A. It's right. You told me that. Yeah. L.A. is going to be difficult to find a house for eighty grand, right? Yeah. <laughs> but where I live, I can find a house for eighty grand, and eighty percent, or I'm sorry, twenty percent of eighty grand. I'm so bad at math. Point two is sixteen thousand. Mm -hmm. So that's basically three five thousand dollar bonuses that I maybe could get over, you know, a four to seven month period of time that I'd save mm -hmm. up, right? But I would just just put that away, and I would just live yeah. off of the month or the, you know the biweekly or monthly checks that I were getting. So that was my strategy. Mm -hmm. um, also, the first two or three that I bought, um, I didn't. I was right out of college and I was making no money. And I didn't even have the money. So I borrowed it from my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, um, and family members. <laughs> and then so I did it kind of in reverse. I'd borrow the money and put it in my bank and then show the bank I had it, get a loan. And then I'd use the cash flow from those properties or the money that I was making in my job. So the first two or three, I didn't have any money, <laughs> zero. Um, and I borrowed it and then I paid it back. And then I'd borrow it and then I paid it back. And then I'm like, well, shit. At that point, everyone was like, yeah, keep borrowing it. You're paying it back. This is great. And I'm like, I want to do this on my own. And I started uh, just saving it and then doing it that way. And then there was a point where um, I was buying houses on credit cards, literally um, you know, <laughs> cheap ones, right? Not, not yeah. getting loans. This is, these were just cash purchases. But I'd go fi find a house for 20 or 30 grand uh, that needed a little bit of work. But I knew that. Um, I had people to help me fix it up or I maybe even just turn around and resell it and I'd buy them on a credit card. I just have their credit card. There's credit cards out there, especially um, if you get them in your business name mm -hmm. that um, you can get 0% financing on these cards right. for like up to 18 or even 24 months. Now, if you're not responsible and you go beyond that, they go back to day one and charge you that 20, yeah. you know, crazy 26, 28%. So you do not want to screw this up. This, if you're going to try to use this approach, be responsible. But I would wire the money from the card to my checking account and then just pay cash for houses and, um, and you know, fix them up and sell them or just uh, uh, refinance them for the most part. So, yeah, I mean, there's lots of strategies. It, I, I've done so many different things. But I think a lot of it just comes down to just kind of being creative, creative. always paying your lenders back. If that's your family or your friends or even just a third party, mm -hmm. you know, having a good credit is very, very important. Last I checked, my score was 808. 
Ooh, so, good. The 808. Yeah. I love that. For, yeah, I mean, I have to look and see, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's even higher now. But that's yeah. one thing that I'm very, very, very diligent about is, you know, making sure that the bills are paid, making sure that anybody that I borrow money from gets paid before I do. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, and that, that's, the, that's the beautiful thing about real estate. We talked earlier about depreciating the item, mm-hmm. the asset, uh, which is a taxation thing. Um, but also any interest that you pay is a deduction on that. Um, and the cash flow that you receive from a property. And if you're not familiar with what that is, cash flow just means that what's left over. Right. So if you owe 800 a month on a house and you're bringing in 1100 a month, that's 300 in cash flow. Well, that's considered income. However, the IRS doesn't tax passive income, which is what real estate falls into, nearly as much as they tax earned income. Yes. That's another thing. I'm, in college, I was kind of a nerd when it came to like, I just love, I just love to learn. Let's put it that way. But I learned at a young age that there's, you know, five different buckets of income that you can earn and it sucks, but the earned income, the income that you trade your time for is taxed the highest. <laughs> and here's why. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't, you may know that, but you, I doubt you know this. The reason is, is because laws are written by rich people to protect rich people. That's it. That's exactly why. So if you can put your money in an investment that pays you money, you can bet your ass that that's going to be taxed half of what it is if you go get a job at Taco Bell or wherever and you trade time. It's, it's, I don't agree with it. I think it's crooked. (laughs) <laughs> However, I'm not going to not play the rules of the game. Right. Right. right? <laughs> so when you can start earning your money from cash flow or dividends mm-hmm. or interest from loans that you're given, basically once your money starts making you money or, or the leverage of money that you're using starts making you money, you pay less taxes on it. Yeah. So once you learn that, it makes you never want to go work. Work like, trade time. <laughs> if I work, I want to be working on something that's going to build me wealth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Another lesson here, guys, is you're only taxed on income. doesn't matter if it's investment income or worked in, or you trade your time for work, right? Your job and you get yeah. income. You're only taxed on your on income. So this is something that I think a lot of people just don't know flat out. When I wake up every day, I don't worry or I'm not, my goal isn't to go make more money. That's what 99.9% of people's goal is. I got to get up. I got to go to my job or I need to study. I need to invest uh, some time, some some education to learn how to make more money. Not me. My goal is to increase my net worth. It's two different things. Mm -hmm. If I can go add, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars to my net worth over a couple months or a year. I pay zero taxes on that. If I go add two or three hundred thousand dollars to my checking account, I'm paying a hell of a lot of tax on that. Mm-hmm. So you should make your goal to increase your worth, and you do so by getting equity in properties and in businesses, yes. right? Yep. And you don't pay taxes on the gain of your net worth. You pay taxes on the income. And the cool thing about real estate and businesses is you can defer the income. Right. And you can have a lot of wealth and you can trade that wealth just like you can trade money. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's basically a legal way yes. of reducing your taxes or eliminating them altogether, all while increasing, you know, your worth as a, as a human, your, 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 your net worth. So mm-hmm. that's yeah. just, I, I learned a lot of these lessons young and I'm still young. I'm 30. <laughs> I feel like I'm 25, but um, I love that. Let's yeah, you know, I, I, I honestly though, I don't wake up thinking, man, I got to go make twenty grand this week. Yeah. Instead, it's like, how do I buy a house with somebody else's money that somebody else pays off? That's mm-hmm. the piggy bank, right? Someone else is going to be paying it off, yes. but also they're going to be depositing a few hundred bucks into that piggy bank for me, and and then beyond that, over fifteen or twenty years. Um, when that person or 40 or, you know, let's say 15 or 20 other tenants mm-hmm. have came and gone. Now I own a house that I didn't pay for and I didn't even put money up to buy it in the beginning. So again, this is a very long term type of a play, but I don't know anybody that's been in real estate for 20 or 30 years. It's not a multi, mm-hmm. multi millionaire. I'm not talking like they got a million bucks. Like, 
these people have like 20 to $30 million, like the people that I network with and, yes. and that have been doing this game for a long time. But, you know, the caveat is oftentimes they, they look like they got $35 in their pocket. <laughs> you know, they're driving around old beat up trucks and they don't that. have Gucci belts on, yes. yeah. you know, and then that's the trade off though. You know, if you want to be flashy and spend all your money and pay a lot of taxes earning it, that's cool mm-hmm. too. You know, it's just not me. Right. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit uh, before we transition. Transition. It's just the idea of wealth. Uh, you know, our, our show, it's called Wildly Wealthy Life, and we love to explore uh, different people's ideas about wealth and what that looks to you. What is your personal, you know, description of wealth? Uh, my description of wealth is um, it is your ability to... It, it, it basically it's a it's 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 a, it's a strange way of looking at it, but to my my idea of wealth is your resourcefulness. Mm-hmm. It's it's your ability to to get things done immediately. So you don't necessarily have to have a lot of money to be to be wealthy. Money helps. Let's not act like it doesn't. You know, money money is very important. But if you have the ability to generate wealth, generate money quickly or get things done without money, then you are, then you are wealthy in, in my eyes. So um, also if you have the knowledge and you're putting the knowledge in place, like you're taking action um, to build your wealth, then, then you immediately are wealthy. Mm-hmm. So wealthy is not a number in my idea, yeah. in my yeah. opinion. It's, it's more of a, of a mindset. You know, I mean, you could take all of the money away from me that I have and I'm pretty confident that, you know, I could, probably get two to three hundred thousand dollars saved up in you know a matter of months just from mm-hmm. the knowledge that I have yeah to go out and network with people and find deals and sell those deals and you know acquire a couple properties with none of my own money just just from the trust that I get from from other people and the banks and um, so yeah and I think health has a lot to do with it too you know health is obviously a different thing than wealth but you are wealthy if you are healthy. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, my wife, together, man. yeah, my wife always gives me, gives me shit because, uh, I'm always comparing myself to the world, not to my neighbor. And I think you guys live in LA. You, this is even harder for you guys to kind of comprehend because you're surrounded by the glitz and the glam and, and lots of people all day long. But like living in America and being an American, you know, is, I don't know the true stats here, but you know, we're like top five, I think we're 5% of the population of the world, right? Give or take. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, we're in the 1% of the world, every one of us, even the homeless people, right? Like you have the ability to walk into a hospital and get treatment. Yeah, you might get a bill, but you're going to get treated. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you have the ability to, to go get a job. The government isn't, you know, isn't, uh, censoring anything so like we're, we're living we live in a great time and in a great place but there's a lot of people out there that are that are in you know in, in in places around the world that don't have clean water and they don't have electricity and they don't have wi-fi internet like oh my god where's the wi-fi i'm gonna freak <laughs> out right right like they don't have cell phones and like yeah so it's like you know, whenever you start comparing yourself to the majority, not just Tom and Bill down the street that got the new Lamborghini, like, oh, poor me. I don't, I drive a Tesla. I need to, now I go, need to go get a Lamborghini. Like, are you freaking kidding me? I have a car. Yeah. You know that one in nine people on the planet has a car? That's even a crazy statistic. Mm-hmm. One in nine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, at some points in my life, not now, but I've had two or three cars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that if everybody could take a step back, quit comparing themselves to their neighbors and really see how good they have it. Mm-hmm. And there's people listening to this podcast or there will be at some point in the future that are in Africa or they're in the middle of Russia or whatever. Right. And they're going to, they're going to be like, damn Dave, you got that right. Because mm-hmm. they probably don't even have a car, but they're probably grateful because they have more than their neighbors do. Mm-hmm. Right. So you got to quit comparing yourself to what you see on E television, right? That's all bullshit. Yeah. Pardon my language, but it's bullshit, right? When you compare yourself to the masses 
Mm. You have running water and electricity and you have safety and your government's not trying to come down on you for some whatever. And you have a bank account. That's another thing. Half the world don't even have a bank account. <laughs> I have like 32 bank accounts. Don't, don't tell me, don't ask me why. I don't know why. But people don't have these things that we have. So I feel like gratitude yeah. is what separates me from most people mm-hmm. is that I actually realize these things. I think about them daily. Yeah. It's not just something I'm like, oh, we're great. Now let's, let's go to, you know, to the bar. It's like, no, I actually like think hard about this. I'm like, man, I got it pretty good. I got it really good. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you know, if you change your mindset to be more grateful, you will immediately be more happy. Yeah. And I think that's truly the, uh, the key to just, you know, living a, a good life and being happy is just start mm-hmm. practicing gratitude. And on that line too, with uh, the podcast, like what we love to do is we love to help our guests just have like a few quick takeaways, you know, and I think you've already given quite a few, but like some different actionable tips, like three tips, um, either from the things that you've already said or just in life uh, that would help students get on that journey to a a wildly wealthy life. What, What would be three things you'd want them to walk away from this podcast with? Yeah, start practicing gratitude, number one. Mm-hmm. Even if you're poor and you want to be wealthy, that's how every wealthy person starts out poor, wanting to be wealthy. They get there over time. So I, I think number one is just be grateful. Number two is be patient. You know, I've been doing my podcast now for three years. I got 135 episodes on it and I haven't made any money on it, but I'm not giving up. You got to be patient, guys. Like you can't try something for three weeks or three months and give up because it's not working you gotta you gotta you gotta be relentless Mm -hmm. all right um so be patient and be relentless be grateful and i'd say number three is you know enough quit trying to over educate i'm not saying don't educate if you enjoy listening to podcasts listen to 10 podcasts but if you want to start a business or start investing, start, all right? Quit thinking that you need to know more than, than you know now, right? You will learn those things as you go. Start now and you don't lose, all right? Whenever I, I've only lost in, on a real estate deal, I think three or four times ever, mm-hmm. right? Ever. And I don't look at it like I lost, even though money was actually lost. I look at it like I learned. Yeah. Right. You live and you learn or you win or you learn. You don't lose. <laughs> yeah. Right. You, it's, it's so true. It's like, I'll never yeah. make those mistakes again. And it cost me a couple grand to make those mistakes. Mm-hmm. But if I were to hire a coach, I would have paid 10 times that amount. Yeah. So it's like I learned it quicker. Right. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Number one, practice gratitude. I forget what I was saying when number two. You're number right. two. You're right. Listen, be patient. Play that again. Be relentless. Yeah, be relentless. Yeah, get out there and get off your butt. You know, get some stuff done. And then number three, just take action. Action is, um, so my favorite quote of all time is three words. All right. And to mm-hmm. me, it is, if, if somebody were to practice this, they will, they will guaranteed have success. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen in a week or two, mm-hmm. but it, it will happen to them. All right, <laughs> here it is. Consistent, <laughs> persistent action. That's it. Consistent, persistent. No matter what you want to do, you want to lose weight, you want to start a podcast, you want to start buying rental properties, mm-hmm. you want to start that business selling on eBay, I don't care. Consistent, yeah. persistent action. Nowhere in that quote does it say go read 37 books. No. Mm-hmm. Just right. Consistently, persistently Focus on what needs to be done and do that. And you're going to have success. So that's kind of where, that's my message, guys. That's where I'm at. I want to thank you guys for having me on the show. Um, If you are interested in learning about real estate, I do have a book. However, I have a free course. So I'm not even asking you to buy anything. If you guys want to learn a little bit about wholesale and real estate and how it works, uh, check out my free wholesale course, freewholesalecourse.com. Um, but other than that, I hope that I was here to give some good knowledge today. Amazing. Uh, we're going to go into just our quick 10 rapid fire. Yeah, questions. let's do it. Questions we ask our guests. Some of them are related to our podcast theme and some of them are just random facts that we want to know about our guests. Don't uh, censor yourself and uh, say the first thing that comes to your mind. 
If yep. you could choose one book to live by, what would it be? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. Awesome. Uh, personal hero, living deceased, or someone you know or maybe don't know? Uh, my dad. Okay. Mm -hmm. One thing that you intentionally have to do every single day? Work out. Okay. Cool. Uh, one hobby that brings you the most joy? <laughs> um, <laughs> talking to my, I would say uh, talking to my team members. Cool. Yeah, I really love that. Just making sure that everyone is, is, you know, doing good and being successful. And if I can help, I want to help. So I, I love talking to my team. Nice. Awesome, man. Uh, most rewarding thing you've done for someone in need? Mm, that list is long. I would say just, um, just providing positive encouragement and positive affirmations to just people in general when they need it. I can, you know, when pe you can tell when people need some help. Yeah. And oftentimes it's not that you have to go out of your way. It's just that you can just say something nice and that changes everything for them. Yeah. That's so true. Uh, first movie quote that comes to mind. I don't know, man. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> <that one>. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, I don't know why that came to mind. I think I saw a commercial with that one the other day. Perfect. It's perfect. A couple La more. Last big purchase you made for yourself. Um, my car, probably about 14 months ago. Okay. And I financed it just because it made sense to do so. Could have paid for it cash, but why? So yeah, it was like $62,000 Tesla, but I love it. And nice. if I crashed it, I'd buy another one tomorrow. So much I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, food you cannot live without. Chips and dip. Ooh. My favorite thing to eat. <laughs> yeah. What is your spirit animal? Ooh, a rhino. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, head down, guys. Charge. You don't need. You know, here's the thing about a rhino. Let me tell you one thing about a rhino. Look at a rhino, or imagine a rhino. It's got this huge horn, right? And its skin is about, I don't know, two to three inches thick. <laughs> Think about how big its ears are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rhinos aren't, aren't out there to listen to what other people say. F that. I'm going to censor myself here. They are just like, I'm charging. Yep. Right? And I just, I love rhinos. I think they're really, really interesting animals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Love that. All right, last one. Uh, finish this sentence. If I'm stuck on an island by myself, dot, dot, dot. I'm going to dig for rum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. I doubt I'll find any, but, you know, that would be, be great if I did come across a bunker of rum. <laughs> That's awesome. Amazing. That's awesome. Well, we thank you so much for being on and spending your time with us today. Uh, you've, you know, you listed a few different places that we can find you. Definitely have those links for everybody, uh, in the links below. And, um, you know, if, if there was anything that you would encourage our guests to maybe pour into or donate their time or money into, uh, just as a parting thing, what, what would be some areas that you feel uh, people could serve into? That's a great question, actually. I've never <laughs> been asked that or it hasn't been a while, but I would say, um, Invest your time into networking, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in real estate. You guys know that by now. So like I go to a lot of real estate networking events, but you don't have to be in the real estate to network. I don't care if you're into knitting, right? Or if you're into yeah. just, you know, playing mm -hmm. sports. Right. Network with people. Use the time that you're around other people, mm, excuse me, that you're around other people to figure out what problems they have in their life and try to solve those problems, offer solutions. You know, you get paid in direct, direct proportion or correlation. I'm having trouble choosing my words this morning here. But you are paid in direct proportion to the, 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 the size of the problem that you solve. Mm -hmm. So network with other people, leverage their resources and offer your resources to them to be leveraged um, because there's a lot of value there. Yeah. And you know, some people look at the number of deals that I've done recently and they're like, oh my God, that's crazy. Well, I know people that have done 1,200 deals mm -hmm. in the amount of time that I've done 400. So it's all relative, right? Right. It's all relative. And, you know, we, I haven't done all those myself. Most of those deals I haven't even seen because I have a team that works them, right? And we also do, I'd say maybe 20 to 30% of those deals with other people meaning that we're joint venturing with them or there's maybe a little bit of a daisy chain in the process, right, right. but I'm involved in it some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. So networking I think is the most beneficial use of one's time. Yeah. 
Mm. And it's often free. But, you mm-hmm. know, get out. Get out and drive 20 or 30 minutes to a networking event. Meet the people that are doing the things that you want to do. Know the big players. And do like I did. I went up and found the biggest investors, wholesalers, landlords in town before mm-hmm. I was one. Mm-hmm. And I stuck my hand out and I said, hi, I'm Dave. I'm not going away. <laughs> That's I love that. And they said, what do you mean? And I go, you'll know, you'll know what I mean in eight years from now or 12 yeah. years from now when I'm still doing this. Yeah. What I mean. And I have people that I know now that I'm really awesome friends with. That they say, man, I remember when I first met you, you told me you weren't going away. You know, <laughs> I'm still I here. Threw it off, you're still there. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, don't, don't be one that's flip flopping all over the place. Yeah. Just figure out what you enjoy doing and make a business out of that. Start mm-hmm. networking with the people that are making money doing that. Mm-hmm. And just be relentless, right? Yeah. Uh, earlier, I'm going to say one more thing. Earlier, you had mentioned my favorite book. It's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But there is a book, um, I believe is Tim Grover. It's called Relentless. Mm. Mm. I think I've heard of that book, actually. Tim Grover. Yes. Okay. So here's the thing about this book. It's about sports. I don't give a rat's ass about sports. I like to watch them on TV, but I couldn't name three players on any team. I just don't care. So with that being said, this book is about sports, but the underlying message isn't about sports. Mm -hmm. It's about business. Mm-hmm. So if you guys are looking for a book to read, and I don't know, Tim, I'm not getting an affiliate commission off of this recommendation, but I would say that's probably my, that's probably my favorite book. Mm-hmm. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, investing business wise, right? Like, you know, more real yeah. estate related. Right. But my favorite book of all time is Relentless. Yeah. And it basically breaks down the best pro athletes in the world and how they are relentless and how you can be too. But basically, their goal and their mindset wasn't winning trophies or championships. It was being the best. Mm -hmm. And they had a mindset of they didn't care if they won or lost. They wanted to be known as the best. And they and they and they share a lot of insight on, you know, on what those people did and how they thought and a lot of its mindset. But yeah, check it out. Relentless by Tim Grover. Thank you so much. It's been so impactful. I really love everything that you've shared and I'm sure that our guests will find a lot of value in it. So thank you for uh, spending your time with us. We, we appreciate your time. Be spent with 100%. Us. Yeah. Hey, no problem guys. I appreciate your time. I'm grateful for it. We'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Awesome. Well, David Dodge was a firehouse. That was love really, that, dude. that was really awesome. David, you're amazing. <laughs> Okay. Well, what I love is just this idea of wealth, which is just so different. He's the first one who has said anything about uh, wealth being resourcefulness. And I just really love that. Uh, To me, it just really uh, reminds me of the kind of like the, the thought that you have to know how to be content when you are in lack and also you have to be you have to know how to be content when you have abundance and knowing what to do in times when you are in lack knowing what to do in times of abundance and just being resourceful at all times and what i really enjoyed is just his viewpoint on looking intrinsically and finding your value and really knowing what you're good at and what you're able to offer. Uh, Mm -hmm. With his coaching business and everything, he started off just doing it for free because it's something that he wanted to share and wanted to do and it's uh, rippled through almost everything that he does. And part of the reason probably why I started following him is that that heart of giving Mm -hmm. and how in depth he gets into with his deals and transactions and just his his, uh, way of sharing, it's really awesome. Yeah. Well, next week is actually our 25th episode. Can you believe that? <laughs> this is our, if you can't see us, watch us on YouTube. We're doing a celebration dance. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, 25th episode next week. That's just such a milestone for us because, again, this journey of podcasting, it's not easy. Some people make it look easy, but it's not. But, um, yeah, so tune in next week for a very, very special 25th episode. We're not going to tell what it is, but it's just a very special episode. And we hope that you join us next week on our very, very first milestone. If you have uh, been with us since the start, we just want to thank you uh, for your support. And we just hope that we continue serving you and that we bring to you guests that will continue to inspire you to move towards financial independence and intentional generosity. (laughs) Well, we'll see you next week. 
Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Wildly Wealthy Life. We hope that this episode has helped you take another step towards living fully, giving freely, and building a legacy that deeply impacts your community. We'd love to hear what you think about today's show. Please leave us a review or like us on iTunes and YouTube and click the subscribe button so you won't miss a show. You can also visit us at wildlywealthylife.com for today's show notes. See you on our next episode. Thank you and may you live a wildly wealthy life.